lecture of this afternoon is uh, to be given by Professor Rajesh Gopakumar from TIFR. Let's welcome Professor Gopakumar. very much uh, evening and uh, I'm very glad to be here uh, for this uh, this meeting and my first visit to uh, to Taiwan uh, uh, so uh, uh, the uh, the title of this workshop is uh, really very appropriate uh, gravity and beyond uh, so you already heard in the first two lectures today morning uh, how different ways of going beyond uh, Einstein's general relativity, you heard about massive gravity, you heard about uh, supersymmetry and supergravity. So these are all different ways of going beyond uh, 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 the framework of general relativity. And today I will tell you along a third axis, uh, if you wish, um, uh, of going beyond general relativity. Uh, and this will be, uh, so, uh, so we'll be going beyond gen GR um, uh, with with higher spin uh, gauge fields, uh, higher spin uh, uh, massless gauge fields. So so when I say higher spin, I typically have in mind uh, a spin greater than two. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, and so you might wonder. Uh, so I'll I'll give you the motivations for this as uh, as we go along. Uh, but um, uh, uh, this this is a direction which uh, has recently attracted uh, a lot of attention. Uh, and thanks actually due to the pioneering work of uh, um, Misha Vasiliev, uh, who uh, has developed the theory of these uh, higher spin uh, interacting gauge fields. Uh, so, uh, uh, so in the morning talk, you heard about a no-go theorem. In fact, there's a theorem of Aragone and Deza, uh, which uh, says that uh, in flat space, uh, if you have interacting uh, gauge fields uh, with uh, spin greater than two, then there's an inc these are even classically inconsistent, very much like uh, linearized gravity coupled to energy momentum tensor, as you heard in the morning lecture is inconsistent. Uh, so there's a no-go theorem uh, of that uh, kind. Uh, uh, but I must stress, firstly, that uh, uh, it is for interacting theories. In fact, uh, 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 one can, the, the theory of free or non-interacting higher spin gauge fields was constructed a long time ago by Franz Dahl in the 1970s, and I will maybe uh, tell you a little about it uh, uh, shortly, uh, but uh, uh, the problem always was how to include interactions, how to go beyond the, uh, uh, the free theory, and uh, this Aragone Dessa theorem seemed to be like a, a, a barrier to doing that, um, uh, but it was, uh, uh, so, so there's a no-go theorem in flat space, uh, So I must uh, stress that it, it is uh, um, uh, the gauge field aspect of these higher spin fields are what is important. You can write down consistent massive higher spin uh, uh, theories, but uh, uh, in flat space. But uh, when you uh, uh, when you have massless fields, or in other words, having a gauge invariance uh, um, uh, of a kind we, uh, which generalizes diffeomorphism, and which we will. Uh, uh, discussed. Uh, th that's where the problem arises. Uh, um, so, uh, so this seemed like a sort of a, um, uh, a killer. Uh, but, um, uh, but as in all no-go theorems, and I think as students, this is something you should really appreciate. Uh, 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 no-go theorems always are formulated with a certain set of assumptions, uh, and a certain sometimes implicit, sometimes explicit. Uh, and uh, and you can always uh, I mean not all well uh, the, the, very often you find a way of sidestepping these no-go theorems uh, by essentially questioning one of these assumptions uh, uh, and you heard this in the morning lecture by 
uh, Jim about supersymmetry, how the Coleman Mandula no go theorem uh, could be evaded by having sort of anti commuting um, uh, uh, symmetry generators. Uh, so, um, uh, so, very similarly, uh, it was realized by Fratkin and Vasiliev uh, in the 80s, I think, in the mid 80s, uh, that um, uh, this could be evaded in uh, anti decitus in, in space times which had a cosmological constant. Whether positive or negative. Uh, so, if you had another parameter uh, 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 in your theory, namely the cosmological constant, uh, then there was a way of evading them. So, uh, so examples are Jupiter space, uh, which is, in a sense, uh, what is cosmologically relevant uh, to our real world, since. Uh, um, uh, it seems to be uh, uh, captured uh, quite uh, well by the presence of a small po a cosmological, positive cosmological constant, but it could also be anti dissiter space uh, or ADS space for sure. Uh, um, uh, so, uh, so this has the cosmological, this has a negative cosmological constant, whereas this has a positive cosmological constant. Uh, uh, so. Uh, so this, it was realized by Fratkin and Vasilia uh, uh, that you could evade this uh, in, uh, in space times with a cosmological constant. And I'll sort of, uh, uh, I'll, uh, uh, I'll show you how uh, they, uh, so one can construct these in, uh, um, uh, in uh, say, anti-visitor space. Uh, uh, so, uh, but what they also realized that was that you need not just, so, uh, so I should say you have, uh, these could be evaded in, uh, in, uh, only in two ways. One, if you have a space time with a cosmological constant. Uh, and two, uh, you need, so they were looking in four dimensions. Uh, 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 so they, uh, they realized that uh, you needed a cosmological constant. And you need an infinite tower uh, of these higher spin fields. Uh, typically, you if you have spin three, then you also need spin four, and so on, uh, all, all the way to infinity. So it's uh, so you could uh, evade it only by introducing. Uh, uh, so if you introduce the spin 3 field, then you have to introduce the spin 4 field, uh, and so on, and you got an infinite tower uh, of these. Uh, so the only hope of evading uh, was if you satisfied these two conditions, uh, namely um, uh, uh, the ones that I've uh, written <laughs> over here. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this was, uh, so they realized you could evade this by uh, actually, they realized you could evade this uh, Aragone Desert theorem uh, in this way, uh, uh, but they hadn't fully constructed the nonlinear theory. Uh, so they started by including interactions into the uh, Fronsdal theory of the free fields. They, they hadn't fully constructed this. Uh, um, uh, the uh, um, the nonlinear theory, and this was completed by Vasiliev over a ten-year period. Uh, so up to I guess the late nineties. Uh, so he he uh, so Vasilya constructed uh, the first full nonlinear system of equations uh, of classical equations of motion. Uh, uh, for this tower, this infinite tower, uh, uh, with uh, with a nonlinear gauge transformation, gauge invariance, uh, generalizing diffeomorphism. So, uh, so
so they can, uh, so he, in a very heroic, almost single-handed effort, uh, uh, constructed this. It's a very complicated set of equations, uh, and um, uh, uh, so it was a very uh, non-trivial uh, uh, achievement. Uh, and uh, the remarkable thing is that the theory appears to be almost unique. Uh, uh, this uh, demanding this very huge nonlinear set of um, uh, uh, gauge symmetries uh, that generalize uh, diffeomorphism uh, essentially fixes uh, fixes the theory uniquely, and uh, 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 so it, it's it's quite a, uh, it, it's quite a beautiful set, a beautiful construction. But before I explain. Um, uh, all that, uh, let me tell you a little bit about, so that you can appreciate this, let me tell you a little bit about the free higher spin uh, gauge fields. So, uh, so, we, uh, so this is the so-called Fronstall formalism, a Fronstall formulation. Uh, um, uh, I won't. Uh, I won't be using this very much, but it's useful uh, to as a sort of a link between general relativity uh, and some of the things you saw today morning uh, to sort of uh, keep this in the back of your mind. So, um, so, so Fronstall started by constructing, considering gauge fields, which are uh, uh, so these are rank S, uh, symmetric uh, tensors. So there are S indices. Uh, um, and uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so I will use this symbol for symmetrization. Uh, so this means uh, all the indices uh, mu1 to mu s uh, are, uh, are, are symmetrized. Um, so uh, so the, of course, the s equal to two case is the uh, is the uh, case of the graviton, uh, and since we are considering the free theory, not the uh, full nonlinear one, uh, um, uh, what uh, we will be generalizing is the is the construction you saw today morning, this Pauli-Pierce construction of the graviton. Will be so. What Fromsdahl did is essentially uh, generalize uh, that. Um, so, uh, so he uh, imposed uh, gauge invariance, which is the generalization uh, of the uh, uh, linearized diffeomorphism. So this was Uh, so, uh, so the generalization uh, of the linearized diffeomorphism is uh, is something in which you have a rank s minus one uh, symmetric tensor as your uh, a gauge. So this is the gauge degree of freedom. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and now you inst so in, in in the morning you saw the linearized diffeomorphisms are just del mu zeta mu del mu zeta mu plus del mu zeta mu. This is just a higher rank uh, version of that in which you symmetrize over uh, all the uh, indices. So this basically means mu one. Uh, so you have this term and then all the ones which are permuted. Uh, with respect to this, by uh, uh, all the indices permuted, uh, so uh, uh, so I, I should say that uh, when you uh, generalize to s spin greater than two, uh, you uh, there are a couple of new ingredients uh, that enter, which is what Fronstall uh, uh, realized. Firstly, uh, if you want to describe the helicity, uh, so the massless spin S particles in say uh, four dimensions uh, would still have only two helicities, the plus S and the minus S. Uh, um, so if you want to just 
uh, capture just those degrees of freedom, uh, then uh, this tensor has actually too many degrees of freedom. You need to impose uh, further constraints. So, uh, so one constraint is that is a somewhat unusual one of double tracelessness. So you need to uh, to in introduce uh, 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 a contraction uh, of uh, a double contraction uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and demand that this be equal to zero. Uh, and so this uh, uh, so of course this constraint uh, operates on only if your spin is greater than or equal to four. That's why you don't see it in uh, you need at least four indices to make this double uh, contraction. Um, so that's why you don't see it in uh, the spin two field, uh, and so on. Uh, 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 so, uh, so it, this is just because a rank S symmetric tensor has sort of in D dimensions, it has uh, so many components: uh, S plus D minus one choose S uh, components. Uh, so these are the number of components, uh, and uh, uh, and even by imposing the gauge symmetry, you, you don't cut it down enough. So to really get a Lorentz invariant uh, description, uh, you need to impose further Lorentz invariant constraints uh, on, the, uh, on the fields. And this double tracelessness is one. And this requires, in fact, that the gauge parameter to be consistent uh, with this. The gauge parameter uh, uh, is, which is an S minus 1 rank tensor. Uh, uh, needs to be traceless. So this is uh, 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 so just a single contraction uh, of of this. So this uh, implies uh, um, uh, so this kind of a condition. So again, this operates uh, uh, or, um, uh, only for sufficiently high spin. So uh, so you have to uh, to impose. These, uh, 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 these constraints, uh, and then write down a classical wave equation uh, which respects, uh, this, uh, uh, respects this gauge invariance. And that's what Franz Dahl did. So what he constructed was something which is called the Franz Dahl tensor. Uh, uh, so this uh, is basically the Laplacian acting on this field uh, minus So you, if you construct this combination, uh, which is a combination of various second derivative terms that you can write down uh, acting on this spin S field. Uh, so this is just the Laplacian, a del square. So this is just del lambda, del lambda. Uh, so this is the usual flat space Laplacian. Uh, and then there's a piece which is sort of a, like a divergence. And then there's a second derivative term acting on the single trace, uh, the uh, trace of this uh, phi field. So the, uh, this tensor is the generalization of what you saw in the morning as the linearized Einstein tensor. So uh, uh, what was called G1, uh, G, G, G mu nu 1. This is the generalization of that to a higher rank. Uh, uh, if you specialize to S equal to 2, you get the linearized, uh, 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 sorry, this is the, uh, so the, uh, this, this is the, uh, this is the linearized Ricci tensor, uh, the li uh, linearization, so for S equal to 2, this is R mu nu uh, 1, so uh, the linearized uh, form of the Ricci tensor. Uh, um, and um, uh, and the wave equation 
it is uh, the the wave equation uh, is given by just f mu one to mu s minus half uh, So this is the analog of the, so you see this is like, uh, for s equal to two, this would be like the Einstein tensor, r mu nu minus half beta mu nu uh, r. Uh, uh, it's like, uh, this is the generalization of the Einstein tensor. Uh, so for s equal to two, this would be g mu nu. Uh, one, and uh, so this, is the wave equation that Franz Dahl wrote. Uh, and you can see that uh, uh, th this, th uh, this is a, uh, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the nice thing about this Franz Dahl tensor is that it is invariant under this. This combination is chosen so that it is invariant under the linear uh, higher spin gauge invariance. So this uh, uh, this gauge invariance, just like the linearized Ricci tensor, uh, is invariant under the linearized homomorphism. Uh, uh, this this is the sort of unique operator you can write down with two derivatives, uh, uh, which is invariant under this kind of a gauge transformation. Uh, and uh, so, of course, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so, the, uh, so this wave, uh, uh, this, uh, so I write it in this way because that will be more natural when you go to curved space. Uh, um, but in any case, um, uh, uh, this, uh, this is as far as you can go for the free theory. So it's not very difficult uh, to construct uh, this generalization of the uh, uh, higher spin, uh, or this generalization of the Einstein theory. Uh, and you can even write down an action uh, uh, for this uh, linearized uh, a quadratic action, uh, which is essentially phi times this wave operator. So it's a quadratic action in the field phi. Um, but uh, uh, it, it, the generalization of this uh, to the nonlinear theory, which in the morning you saw how uh, when you, uh, 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 that, the, that this theory by, the linearized theory is not consistent by itself when you couple it to uh, any source fields. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, uh, this theory is also not consistent uh, for very much the same reason. Uh, and uh, so, but in the case of spin two, uh, you could iterate this um, uh, procedure, uh, and you got the Einstein-Hilbert action or the full uh, Einstein equations. Uh, but over here, uh, this procedure uh, was uh, was, uh, uh, and people tried to do this. They uh, they ran into all kinds of obstacles, and that's when uh, Aragon and Deser uh, uh, um, for, uh, formalized all those. Uh, uh, obstacles and saw that there was a sort of a genuine problem in, in uh, going to the nonlinear theory, uh, unlike in the case of uh, unlike in the case of uh, the spin two case. Uh, so, um, so as I said, this is what uh, Vasiliev uh, uh, Vasiliev overcame, uh, and uh, 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 so. Um, uh, uh, but uh, uh, but you needed to you needed both these ingredients. You needed to go to uh, a space time with a cosmological constant uh, and uh, have an infinite tower uh, um, uh, of such fields. So you might think, okay, this is a sort of a curiosity, and indeed, uh, for a long time, Vasiliev's work was. Uh, that's why he had to do this single-handedly because uh, everyone thought this was just some. Uh, uh, this was just a pointless exercise, uh, 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 but Vasiliev persisted, and he constructed this uh, set of beautiful set of equations, uh, 
um, in anti visitor space or visitor space. Uh, so, uh, but why is this of interest? Uh, so, let me come to the motivation. Uh, uh, so why is this just not some curiosity? Uh, 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 so there are two sort of linked motivations. Uh, uh, well, you could, of course, give a zeroth order motivation, which is that uh, we are in a universe with a positive cosmological constant, presumably. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, and so maybe it is uh, indeed uh, relevant, but, uh, 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 but, uh, but we certainly don't have evidence for uh, a massless higher spin fields uh, or near massless uh, higher spin fields in our uh, uh, in our uh, universe. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, so the motivation is more theoretical, uh, and uh, and uh, so let me outline uh, a couple of these motivations. So. Uh, so the first one is sort of from string theory, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, for those of you who have sort of uh, uh, who have uh, uh, who know a little bit about string theory, maybe it will make sense. But uh, uh, but anyway, I won't I won't be dwelling so much on this aspect. Uh, uh, the the aspect I will uh, be more interested in these lectures is from the point of view of holography of uh, what is sometimes called the ABS CFP correspondence or the gauge gravity correspondence or gauge string correspondence uh, uh, um, Maldesena conjecture. I mean it goes by all these different names uh, uh, but uh, uh, so I'll explain a little bit about these two motivations uh, and uh, as to why these Bessilier theories uh, are uh, actually very interesting. Uh, so, um, so first, a uh, little bit about this, though. Uh, as I said, I won't uh, dwell on it. Maybe in my lecture on Friday, I will say a little bit more uh, about this uh, by the seminar. Uh, but um, uh, so, string theories. Yeah, uh, you even if you have sort of had only a nodding acquaintance with string theory, uh, even if you have just heard a few popular talks. And one of the things you probably have heard is that string theory has, uh, uh, string theory is firstly an attempt to give a ultraviolet completion uh, the quantum level to gravity, uh, namely to uh, uh, to remove the uh, uh, to remove the uh, ultraviolet problems that uh, conventional quantum field theoretic description of uh, the Einstein uh, Hilbert action uh, uh, has. Um, and the way it removes this is by uh, introducing an infinite set of massive particles uh, in the in the spectrum. Uh, so, so then an infinite set of uh, massive higher spin particles. Uh, so there are there are a few a finite number of massless particles which uh, so at least if you look at string theories in flat space there are a few massless particles maybe which uh, are the ones which you are more familiar with the uh, massless spin one or spin zero uh, uh, and spin one fields uh, which are uh, like the young Mills fields uh, and um, uh, and uh, uh, and then there are a couple of form fields like you heard in the morning. Uh, uh, lecture, uh, uh, but uh, uh, other than that, there is of course the spin two graviton. Uh, uh, these are the um, massless fi uh, fields, but there's an infinite set of massive uh, higher spin uh, uh, particles or fields in the spectrum, uh, which uh, whose mass is given by the string tension, is set by the string tension, uh, and uh, it's this presence of this these particles that give you the nice ultraviolet properties. Uh, of um, uh, 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 of the of string theory, uh, which is why you don't encounter the infinities. Uh, um, so, uh, so these are uh, uh, so at least in flat space, uh, 